Aloha and welcome to our first lesson on how to crochet. My name is Ashley and I'll be teaching you how to crochet. Now I know some of you think crocheting and knitting are for grandmas, but that's not true, at least not anymore. There are many young people who crochet. I actually learned how to crochet when I was 18. I really wanted to learn and one of my aunts was able to teach me and she helped get me started on learning everything there is to know. And my grandma helped um, get me some of the supplies and got me some books on how to learn and I soon progressed from making scarves to making hats, then basic blankets. Now I can make so many more things. Um, you can see some of the things I have made behind me. I just finished making a very large, large Pokemon blanket for my nephew. I made Halloween blankets for my nieces and an army of gnomes for my cousins for Christmas. I've made baby toys and lays and all kinds of things. I love to crochet because it helps keep me calm, it's very relaxing, and it lets me be creative and artistic in a different way because I am not good at drawing or painting or any of that. Um, Sometimes I have to problem solve to fix something if I made a mistake or if I'm trying to create something new. It's actually a STEAM activity because there's reading, problem solving, math, and art all combined when you crochet. All you need to do today to get started is some yarn and the bigger the better. So I have a really thick gauge yarn here, um, but I, um, you might see other yarns that are a little bit thinner so um, there's some thin yarn you can see the difference between the thickness and then this is even thinner so you want as thick as you have or as thick as you can find um, and it'll be a lot easier to learn we're not going to use a crochet hook today I have tons of crochet hooks and I'll show you what those look like in a little bit um, and how you would use those but you don't need one today you just need a thick yarn so you can learn how to get started um, and you can kind of see with the thicker yarn um, how it works and a long time ago crochet and knitting were considered critical life skills today they not necessarily are but you can make really cool things um, to get started to help you need to learn how to make a slip knot so First, to make a slip knot, you're going to take one end of your yarn and you're just going to make a little ribbon with it, like this. So you see the ribbon? You can see, just pinched it together here. And then you're going to take one end and go through. Let me show you better. So you take one end, the end connected to your ball of yarn and you wrap it around and then pull it through and now you've made a slip knot. You see you have your loose end still here, that's okay, have a little tail, but you can see the knot slips up and down and I can show you again, let me take it apart and I'll show you one more time how to do it. Um, so you make, take your little one end and you just flip it and you make your little ribbon, like you're doing a red ribbon week or something like that. And then you're gonna take the end connected to your ball of yarn and you're gonna wrap it around that loose end here and then put it through the loop and pull tight. And now you've made a slip knot. And you can see it moves up and down the yarn. Okay, and that's all you really need to do to get started with this is make that slip knot so it moves up and down. And next we're gonna learn how to start chaining. So chaining is what gets us going um, and it's our foundation that everything is built on in crochet. And so the chain is long and then you build up from there and that is how you get started so we've made our loop 
we're going to use our two fingers. You can see my thumb and finger. I'm going to use those. And I'm going to just grab the yarn. So I go through the hole. You can see through the hole. Grab the yarn and pull through. Okay? And it doesn't have to be tight. You don't want to make it too tight to start. Um, you can see it's kind of loose. And then, so I have one chain here. And then I'm going to grab it and pull through. And I've chained two. And just go through, grab it, and pull. Go through, grab it, and pull. Go through, grab, and pull. Okay, so we're making a chain. So you can see my chain. And you can see I didn't make it too tight. I didn't make it too giant. I just make it nice and loose. Um, I don't want to have too big of gaps, but um, I don't want it to be really tight because then I'm not going to be able to build on it from there. Let me take this apart real quick. It's easy. It comes right apart. And then I'm back to my slip knot. And I'm going to show you again how to chain. So you can do this left-handed or right-handed. It doesn't matter. You just put your, two, your thumb and your finger, index finger, your pointer finger through. And then you grab the, where the ball of yarn is, not this loose end. Um, this yarn. And you just grab and pull through. And then you keep that loop on your finger. You don't want it too loose or too tight. And you just grab and pull through. Grab and pull through. Grab and pull through. Grab and pull through. Super simple, super easy. This is all the, like the easiest way to get started in crocheting. Um, later you can learn how to use a hook, but with your two fingers and thick, chunky yarn like this, you can make some really cool, interesting things, and it's really easy to do. So we've made a chain, and our chain isn't too long. We're just going to start off easy. Now, in our chain, you're going to see some large spaces. That's where you're going to put your next stitches. So you can see these big spaces. And that's a nice foundation for our next, our next step. So we've made our chain. Our chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. So I made a chain. That's 10 spaces. Yours can be 10 or it can be more, it can be less. Whatever you want it to be right now. But this is my chain and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my fingers through this loop and I'm gonna turn my work over. So now I have these big gaps, you can see. And my yarn is going to stay on the back side. So let's pretend our chain, if you're looking at it, our chain. And if you live on the windward side, you know those islands, the Mokes, out there from Kailua Beach and Lanakai Beach. Um, and the sun comes from behind the Mokes. So we're going to pretend that our chain is, are the Mokes. And the yarn is the sun. So the sun comes from behind the mokes. So we're always going to keep our yarn behind the mokes, which is our chain. And we're going to take our two fingers and we're going to go through the first gap here. And my gap's a little tight, but you can see I have my chain out and it's going to be like, I can put it across my shoulder. So you can see that. And then I'm going to take my two fingers through. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull through just one through the work once. And now I have two loops on my fingers. And then I'm going to grab the yarn again and pull through both. Okay? So I've pulled through both. And now I've done one single crochet. So let's see that again. We can just keep going. So you kind of have a loop, a little curved end there. That's okay. 
I have my yarn here, the mokes. I have, or my chain is the mokes. I have my yarn on the back side, the sun. I'm gonna keep my two fingers through here and go through that next big gap. So I'm gonna go through this next big gap. So you can see, I go through the back gap and then this is the back. For me, I'm gonna pull through one loop and then get, have two loops on my fingers and then tighten it just a little bit so it's not so loose and then pull through, grab the yarn again and pull through both loops, okay? So let me take it apart. You can see again from this way, you just go through the big gap, the first one, and you pull your yarn with your one loop on your fingers and you pull to get two loops. You just pull the yarn through the gap. You don't pull it through that loop on your finger. And then you grab the yarn again and you pull through both loops. And then keep it here. We're gonna go to the next gap in the chain. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna grab the yarn, pull through that gap, Get the yarn on our two fingers, on our thumb and our finger. So we have the two loops now. Grab the yarn again and pull through. You can see I tighten and then I'm gonna tighten it down. Not too bad. And then we're just gonna keep going until we have finished that row on our foundation. So it's really not too difficult once you realize you just gotta go through that gap, grab your yarn and just pull through the gap, get two loops on your fingers and then pull through the yarn again. So it's not too difficult, but it can be challenging trying to hold the yarn and figure it out to start, but once you get it down, you'll see the gaps. You'll know to go through that one, pull through, have the two loops on your fingers, and then pull through again. And you're gonna keep going. So we're almost done with this first row. I'm almost done with this first row. And then I'll show you what to do once you finish your first row of single crochets. And when you're doing this with a hook, um, a crochet hook, which I'll show you in a bit, it, um, it can be, I think it's easier, but to get started learning, it's easy to do with your fingers so you can learn, you know, exactly what you're doing. And then once you get that down, you can move on to the hook. But since I'm so used to using a crochet hook, my fingers, it's been, uh, it's harder for me, I think, but probably easier for all of you. And then, we have one more, one more. We're gonna take it through, pull that yarn through the, through the gap in our yarn, in our chain, and then pull through. So now we've made one row of single crochets. To make the next row, we're going to flip our work. So we're always gonna go one direction. So we flip our work, we make sure our long yarn is on the back, the sun, and the mokes in the front. And then we just keep going. So you can see the gap is a little different now, but you can see there's still a gap to go through on each one. And we're gonna build up until we have a nice big piece of crocheted fabric, basically, that we can turn into something. So. Um, we can make a big square and turn it into a um, trevet, like a pot holder to keep your hot plates or dishes off the table so you don't mess up the table or the counter. Um, or you could turn it into a basket in a circle um, and you can store stuff in it. But we'll see what we come up with. Um, so to start our next row, we just, we've turned our work and we're going to, <laughs> and we're going to go through the gap. You can see the gap there. And we're gonna go through the gap 
and grab our yarn from the back side and pull through the first loop or through the gap just once. So we have two, two strings, two strings of yarn on our finger, two loops, and then we pull through both loops to create a single crochet. Okay, and then make sure your yarn isn't too loose or too tight, just big enough to fit your fingers through and move a little bit. And then you just go to the next gap and you pull through the gap. You have your two loops, you grab your yarn and you pull through again. And then you go to the next one. So we're just gonna keep going until we've created a piece of fabric. And when we get to the end of the second row, because this is the second row, we did the cha foundation chain. We did row one, and then, now we're on row two, we will turn our work over again when we get to that row, end of the row. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we have built up a big piece of crocheted fabric. And then we can turn it into whatever we want. And once you get really good at this, you can you know, make things in circles, you can make hats, you can make stuffed animals, um, you can make all those little gnomes I was telling you about. I've made um, blankets, I've made all kinds of things um, crocheting. I've made slippers. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can make and it's super easy and fun and it's so relaxing. I like to crochet in the evening and relax while I'm watching TV and I do it and I don't even have to look at it half the time. I can just keep chaining or keep, you know, doing my single crochets or whatever stitch I'm doing and there's lots of different cro crochet stitches. This is just the beginner one. This is the single crochet. And so we've got to the end of our second row. So you can see We've made two single crochets and a chain, a foundation chain. So we've made two rows. We just flip it and we make sure we put the yarn that we're using on the back side. So for you guys, this is the mokes. And then here's the back side with the yarn that facing you guys. So and we'll just keep going and going until we have made a big piece of crocheted fabric. And you can see the gaps. You can see the gaps in each row where you put your fingers through to grab that yarn. And you just have to look very carefully to see where those are and to keep going. Um, and crocheting is just so much fun and so relaxing. And I'll show you in a minute what our big piece of fabric will look like and what you can do with it. So, I have completed some rows on my yarn, on my yarn, on my crocheted project. So, I've completed these rows and it's not too big. I could keep going. I could make it really long and make a scarf or I could make it um, just a big square and use it as, you know, a pot holder or something like that. But um, what I think I want to use this for is I'm going to make a popsicle holder because I hate touching the cold plastic popsicles. So I'm gonna make a popsicle holder to keep my hands from getting all wet and cold. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this long string off. I've got two long strings, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm gonna cut the end of this and then so I just cut and I ha left myself a tail so I can tie it off. And then I'm just going to take this, the loop on my fingers, and then pull the yarn tail through and pull it tight. And I've just tied that off. And I have this other tail, but I'm going to use that to, so I'm going to make a little, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold my, my crochet fabric in half. And then I'm going to take the longer tail and I'm going to, sew with my fingers this piece together. So just go through and then through both pieces and then just keep going back and forth and sew it together just like this and just poke it through both holes. Try to keep it even but you know it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're just learning and now I'm gonna have 
my popsicle holder so I can stick my popsicle in. And if I want, I can sew the bottom here together closed as well with my yarn. So I'll do that so the popsicle doesn't fall out of the bottom. So I'm gonna keep poking through both loops. You can kind of see, I just take the yarn and I go th through two holes until I have sewn it closed. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot. Um, so I'm gonna go through and make a loop and pull the tail of yarn through. And then I'm gonna go around and through the hole and pull it tight. And I've made a knot to secure it. And I can cut off these loose ends and make it nice and pretty. And I've made a little popsicle holder now and I can stick my popsicle in there and hold it. I finished my sewing my popsicle holder and I've trimmed the ends and you can see it's just perfect. It's a little big, but that's okay. And it's definitely working, keeping my hands from getting wet or cold. So I'm very excited about this and there's so many things you can make once you really know how to crochet and I was going to show you some different versions of crochet hooks so crochet hooks come in all kinds of different sizes and they're made from different materials so um, you can see this big chunky one is one you would use on this thicker yarn that I have here um, and then you can see there's other types I have these uh, nice cushioned ones now because I crochet so much um, my fingers hurt if I don't use the the nice cushioned ones um, but they also make wooden crochet hooks um, out of bamboo and different materials you can see this one is a wooden crochet hook they're very fancy my friend my best friend gave me these and I love them and I use these quite a bit so they come in all different shapes and sizes here is, and, it, and the different sizes are for the different sized yarn, gauged yarn you would use. So I might use this really small crochet hook for this thin gauged yarn. And you can see on the yarn, it will tell you um, what size crochet hook you should use. They're all numbered. You can see this is a B 2.0 millimeters. Um, so this one, this yarn, is a nice wool Noro yarn made in Japan. It's very fancy. Um, I like this one. And so this one says you could use um, four and a half to five millimeter crochet hook. So this is a two, it's very small. So we would need a bigger one. So here's a four and a half. And you would use this four and a half. And it says it right here, you can see right there those are the directions and you can knit with this yarn but you can also crochet and and it tells you the size and um, a lot of crochet hooks so the wooden ones I have they say the size on the bottom so you can see it's an M13 and it's a nine millimeter crochet hook. And they'll put multiple um, ways to distinguish because depending on where the yarn is made, they go by millimeters or the letter. Um, so you just kind of gotta make sure you look really carefully so you know what size crochet hook to use. And this one says it here, it's a P16, 11 and a half millimeter crochet hook. So quite large, but they all come in different sizes and you, you, you change crochet hooks based on the size of yarn you're using um, and how, you know, thick you want your, your yarn, how thick your yarn is and how big of gaps you want to leave to. Um, so if you want it really tight, you might use a smaller crochet hook depending on the thickness of your yarn. But that is basically an intro into how to crochet just using your fingers and maybe next time I'll make another video showing you how exactly you would use that crochet hook. Um, to start you definitely want to use thicker chunky yarn um, so it's easier to learn how to do it all on there. And you can see I've had behind me just a rolling um, scroll of different projects that I have made and completed throughout my years of crocheting. Some are really goofy, some are fun. I've made 
so many different things and given out gifts to everybody. I rarely keep anything I make. Um, I usually give it out to people as gifts and I just really enjoy making things and being creative and I hope you do too. And I hope we can keep learning and growing. And if you have questions, you know, type it in and I can try to answer those questions and let you know, you know, this is what I did. And there's lots of video tutorials out there. I'm sure they're better than mine on how to learn how to crochet. And you can just keep picking it up and learning. And there's books if you prefer reading over a video. I know that's how I prefer learning. So that's how I learned is my aunt taught me by hand first how to hold the yarn and everything and then I read it in books how to do it from there because I'm much better reading and learning that way. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you start creating and learning how to crochet and making cool things and enjoying that calm relaxing time. Have a great day. Bye Girl Scouts.